Hi, welcome to this ESCO software solution demonstra demonstration series. In this episode, we will be covering RDOSCAD Enterprise. All participants have been muted. And at the end of this demonstration, we will unmute for Q&A. My name is Bart Mearshart and I will be your host today. Also stay tuned for additional sessions. An event calendar is available on ESCO.com brand solution. So RDS CAD Enterprise. RDS CAD Enterprise is a centralized CAD repository where all different stakeholders can access their files. It gives you that cloud-based backbone, that digital framework in which all the designers can store and retrieve their files. Why work with RDS CAD Enterprise? Because it greatly improves communication. As I mentioned, all assets are stored in a central secure database in the cloud. Faster order to cash, improve profitability and increase customer satisfaction. Here on the screen, you can see the browser, which gives you access to that online central database to retrieve all your packaging assets, not only structural files, but all other assets as well. This is very secure and uh, easy to search. And um, with that, uh, you can also uh, work offline and then synchronize later as you get back online. So this is great for uh, structural designers who work from home, for example, and um, who don't have a good connection to the internet. They can later, as they uh, have a better connection, uh, reestablish that connection to that database and synchronize. So essentially the solution has this database uh, and from this central database, the assets are hosted in the cloud. So there is a cloud-based interface. Um, you will have one password uh, that gives you uh, admin access to that to set up templates um, and so on and users. Um, if you want full access to that, uh, you would also need to uh, purchase an additional um, web center license. So from the RDS CAD workstation, Structural designers can connect, upload, and download files. And as you can see here, they can also disconnect. All the work that they do will be memorized. And then when they get back online, it will all be synchronized back to the cloud. In a different location, another user can access those assets as well. And obviously, because it's cloud-based, Users can also see the interface from a mobile device. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that and let's see what this solution looks like. So at first glance, it doesn't look any different than a regular RDOS CAD. Um, as we look at the splash screen, we can see here this is the enterprise flavor. So let's go ahead and create a project in the cloud and see how this works. So you can see here that uh, we have the possibility to log into that cloud. So uh, this is also the first hint as you start up the software that you're working with the enterprise flavor. So this is essentially the login to that cloud. All right. Um, so here I have established a username and password for myself so I can go ahead and establish that connection to that cloud. So once that is done, um, I can see here I can also work offline, which will disrupt that connection and then reconnect. And uh, everything will be managed at that point with a cache manager who will keep track of all the things that uh, I have done while I was disconnected from that cloud. 
the best uh, way to start this demonstration is to show you your new best friend called the browser shortcut control B think of the browser as a window into that cloud right so it's like a tunnel that gives you visibility into that cloud where all these assets are stored now storing assets just willy-nilly is not really a good way to work so what we typically do is we store assets in a project okay. and you can see here I have a list of some recent um, projects that I worked on uh, here I can go and see all my projects notice um, the different columns giving you a description a project name when those uh, projects were created and modified um, right here um, if you are more comfortable with uh, no icons you can go ahead and do that or larger icons uh, you can change that up here with the style and uh, here you can see the different uh, orange icons that give you the possibility to create a new project so let's go ahead and do that so I click on new project and the first question that uh, RDS CAD Enterprise asks me is to pick a template so what is a template well a template is a cookie cutter think of a template as a uh, list of different characteristics that were already assigned ahead of time All right so this is great if you have different product lines that require a different workflow different clients um, you know different regions so you could create templates for all those and then pick up that cookie cutter create your project make a few changes and you're off to the races so let's uh, say here demo um, ACAD uh, enterprise and and let's say this is a folding carton that we're going to design for a pill bottle let's say 200 uh, count uh, pills in that pill bottle this uh, template is a fairly simple template it only asks me for um, you know a customer and a location so let's say we're going to make this for Apple in California once I hit the OK button you can see here that the name of the project was created automatically uh, we're using the date here February 11 2021 and it looks like this is my second project uh, that I make today zero underscore zero zero two I can see the status is active when it was created my description customer location I can also at this point uh, attach a sales person right here and I can tag this with characteristics so let's say here this is going to be for food and it's going to be uh, a label or in my case a folding carton and it's going to be for a pharma application so later I will be able to search on those and find that and then here you can see some attributes um, where did these come from uh, these attributes again were also part of that template that I picked and this allows you to specify certain parameters for this template so here you can see a barcode um, a uh, designer who has been uh, assigned to this a cat reference um, you know a design yes or no so some of these are questions that give you a drop down with restricted values yes or no uh, here uh, brand so I have a restricted set of brands right here um, and again that is all part of the setup of those templates and I'll go ahead and show you how that is done here in a minute as well so uh, I am happy with this so I create my cloud based project and I can see that the project already has some subdirectories like a BOM folder bill of material a cat folder a doc folder and a folder for graphics beautiful um, so again at this point I can also right click on this and I can still query that information right here so project information will 
pull up that window that we had earlier. And what I can also do here, and we'll do this to reveal this project in a web browser, is use the open project in a web browser functionality. So let's pause here for a second. So we've been working in our RDS CAD Enterprise client. We created a project in the cloud. And now I asked RDS CAD Enterprise to show me this project in the cloud. For that, it is starting up this browser, which gives me access as an administrator to this project. Now, keep in mind, in order to have full access to this cloud, uh, you will need uh, additional licenses. Uh, if you just want to manage, you just get one uh, password to manage. Um, but if you need more access like here, you would need additional licenses. So here I can see again those folders that were created earlier. I can also see that this template that I used to create this project has some members. Those are stakeholders. And those people were invited automatically to this project. I can see here a graphics person was invited. A customer um, is invited. A conceptual designer was invited. Uh, each of these people have certain security levels within this project within these subfolders and we can set up notifications when certain things happen in that project when would you like to notify these stakeholders as well as setting up approval cycles for this project so whenever a file ends up in one of these subfolders we can start this default approval cycle and in this case a customer is uh, invited to look at these assets. Okay, so let's switch back over to Arduous CAD Enterprise and start designing a project, a file within this project. So I'm going to close my browser. Uh, notice here I am still in Arduous, so I am going to uh, start by designing a folding carton. So let's say we're gonna do a uh, tuck on second, a standard folding carton. We're going to use the folding carton SBS 14 for this. And my carton needs to be five inch, two and a half deep, and seven and a half height. So I'll be with that. That looks great. My design was created. I can see my dimensions in here. Uh, and uh, that looks great. So. A uh, couple of things uh, before we save this in our project. Right here in Arduous CAD Enterprise, you'll find this project tab where you can reveal the project bar. So the project bar will show you here uh, on the right hand side uh, the project in which I will save this file. Currently, it says no project because I just created it. I haven't saved it yet. So let's go ahead and save this. And as I save this file uh, right here, I can just save as such. So again, this would just be a um, save, which uh, right now will uh, kind of point to a project. And uh, here I can determine, yes, this is the project I'm working on, 002, cat folder, this is where I want to save this design. Okay, so as soon as I save this design, the interface shows me again the project I will be saving this in. Very important right here, it will assign a version number to this folding carton. Uh, this, in my mind, is also one of the biggest uh, values that you get uh, from using Enterprise, uh, benefits of Enterprise, that it really manages uh, versions very well. So it really limits the possibility of making mistakes as far as versioning is concerned. And we'll talk about that a little more in just a second. There are two layers of versioning. There are revisions and versioning. I can see all the design information. So length with depth, blank, width, height, run length, uh, area, 
is calculated here for me and I can save this in my project. So as soon as I save this in the project, you can see here in my project browser that now the, the software knows which project I am saving this in and in which folder that is saved. So here you can see this design sitting now in this cloud project. Very nice. So here again, we have the uh, icons uh, that you can change. Uh, I have the information. So by clicking on the file, I get file information. Um, you can also use this little pin here to uh, pin it. And so it will always be visible. And then selecting the project, again, you get project information. Beautiful. So um, now I'd like to show you also again from that web point of view where is that file uh, stored and what does that look like so i'm going to switch over to my browser again um, nothing shows here why because i have not refreshed my screen so keep an eye on this cat folder i do a refresh and you can see now this design that we just created now sits in this cloud based storage a few things. Notice the lock icon, so keep an eye on that. Uh, the reason why this file is locked is because it is still active, it is open in Argus Cat Enterprise. That means that if my colleague, uh, let's say here in, let's say in California, would uh, go online and would try to work on that file, you know, he or she would know that uh, it's currently being processed. Okay, so somebody is working on it. So this will prevent people from inadvertently working on the same file at the same time. Um, it has a, uh, an approval um, right here assigned to it, and it's got a version number assigned to it. So um, in the approve reject, we can click on that, and we can see here that a customer was invited to look at this file and to approve this file. Okay, so a customer can review this uh, without uh, problems. Now, what I'd like to do as well is to show you again this locked characteristic. If we would go back, I have saved this in the cloud. So if I close this um, and we would switch back over to my browser and we would refresh, keep an eye on the lock uh, icon, that lock icon disappears because the file is no longer open. Okay, let me just quickly show you uh, from a customer standpoint what that would look like. That customer would receive a email with an invitation to look at that uh, structural file and to approve that. They would click on the link in the email and immediately they would be taken here to this uh, file here in this Web Center viewer. So this is designed that was uh, communicated for review. The uh, customer notices a mistake, however. So this had to be a perfect um, square box. So they uh, can indicate here that this is wrong, that this needs to be, needs to be also 7.5 inch. Uh, so we could do that in different ways. So by just using the, uh, you know, uh, annotation that I uh, made or uh, right here, you know, using the uh, measure tool and then using that uh, tool right here, change to seven and a half. So I could, I could do that uh, like so. Don't need to see the angle. Um, and I am going to reject this. So super easy to make these changes. Uh, here we're also capturing a reason for rejection. So it's a wrong specification, make changes. Okay, so I'm gonna commit to that rejection and my job is done. So I can exit the viewer and I can exit the uh, access to this uh, software. Okay, so let's log out and let's log back in as the uh, administrator, the project manager, so to speak. So I will find that the uh, file right here has been rejected. 
so I can create some dashboards uh, where I can see you know if files have been approved or rejected and why they have been rejected and I can also see here in my annotations what needs to change so as a um, structural designer I can now uh, start working on that change so opening my browser again control B um, I can see in my project right here my cat file and this cat file was rejected I need to make a change so we can open that and go into my design rebuild my design to seven and a half inch as so this can have an impact on some other values I'm going to ignore those um, those are the flaps and whatnot so uh, now I have a perfect seven and a half by seven and a half I made that change and we can now uh, save this as a new version so as previously we just used a save in the initial first version now I have the possibility here to again uh, increase that uh, version number why also revisions well revisions kind of give you that higher level uh, cycles uh, review cycles so think of revisions as small little iterations as you go from version to version and then once you end up at a point where all the stakeholders think hey this looks good then you would publish it as a revision okay so revisions are indicated with letters uh, from a to z um, versions obviously are numerical so a1 a2 a3 once you publish this becomes uh, b1 um, you can always go back to previous versions but as soon as you save that that then becomes uh, a latest and greatest again preventing you from making mistakes so in my case long story short um, made a change to 7.5 inch all looks good um, my task is done so I am going to save this and notice here that Artis Cat Enterprise automatically increases that version number okay the comment was saved in there as well and we can save this beautiful so my job is done if we switch on back over to that cloud and uh, we look here in my well this is still the browser so in the browser also I can see you know my uh, version uh, having increased here to number two we can close the browser um, I wanted to switch back over to my project so here in your project you can see the cat file now has a version two okay so because it was closed uh, the lock is gone and uh, we also notice here that automatically the uh, approve approval cycle has been started so this is something you can set up in your configuration and we were going to talk about this configuration here in a second let's finish this story so if I click on the approve reject um, you can see again that uh, this person here was um, requested to look at this file and approve or reject so if we play the role of that customer and we log in we will see that file waiting for their uh, approval they can see that the change was made that's beautiful but even better uh, keep an eye on this icon here this allows me to compare this uh, these two versions with one another so I can pull in version one as you can see here on the top of the screen I am now having two versions open from this same cloud-based project and I can overlay these on top of each other I can toggle between these version 2 or version 1 I can uh, compare both versions by swapping out version 1 and 2 every couple of seconds or I can look at these two versions side by side 
and then I can ask to see the difference or not by using this icon. So this gives me a really great tool set to make sure that the file uh, I am looking on, I'm looking at is uh, indeed the change that was requested. So I am going to approve this and this ends my cycle. So this file now disappears off my to-do list and the uh, project manager is now happy and the structural designer is happy because now we have a file, a cat file that has been approved. We only needed two versions. Now this file can automatically be uh, streamlined and uh, a task can be fired off to a structural designer who could go into Web Center. So instead of loading this uh, from my local hard drive, I could go to Web Center and I could go ahead and open up this uh, project. So let's make sure we are in the uh, right uh, instance. So let me just quickly uh, change that instance. Let's switch over to, I think it's uh, Web Center 14. So let's uh, just add that manually. No, that's not the proper um, IP. So it's uh, right here, Web Center inst. This is the uh, this is the proper uh, link to that project. So let's see if we can paste that in there. But I don't believe. Yeah, this is my local. And then we would log in, and we would have access to uh, recent projects, uh, any uh, any project uh, that I created. So uh, I could search. So if I search on uh, today, so uh, star 2.11, um, I can see my project right here. And in my cat folder, I have my version 2, which I can now place. Use my trim box and media box. Fit that to my design. And we are off to the races to design this. Uh, to start adding graphics to this uh, box right here. Okay, so uh, let's um, just quickly also reveal again, let's switch back on over to uh, Web Center. Uh, there's not uh, a lot of time left anymore, so maybe we'll cover this in another uh, session, how to make templates for um, RDS CAD Enterprise in this Web Center solution. Um, I can already reveal uh, where they, these are located. So uh, if you have full access uh, to this, this is where you could uh, create these templates. And so you can see here, uh, this is my list of all my templates. And this was the one, the ACAT template that we used for our uh, setup. So in the next session, um, visit me uh, again and uh, I'll walk you through the creation of these templates that you can then use in Arduous CAD Enterprise. So in summary, I would say Arduous CAD Enterprise gives you a cloud-based storage, which is great for different stakeholders in different physical locations or working from home. You'll all share this central cloud-based uh, repository where you can save and manage your files. Number two, versioning is managed very well using versions and revisions. And it just gives you this uh, flexibility of storing your assets in projects uh, with additional metadata. Uh, once uh, all your uh, projects are uh, running in the cloud. Um, there's also real-time dashboarding uh, that you can, uh, where you can see visually where all your projects are and uh, save that information even into Excel for custom reporting. Uh, 